Arrow's ultimate success will require partnerships with the interagency, industry partners, academia, and the scientific community, as well as the public. Arrow is partnering with the services, intelligence community, DOE, as well as civil partners and across the U.S. government to tap into the resources of the interagency. The UAP challenge is more an operational and scientific issue than it is an intelligence issue. As such, we are working with industry, academia, and the scientific community, which bring their own resources, ideas, and expertise to this challenging problem set. Robust collaboration and peer review across a broad range of partners will promote greater objectivity and transparency in the study of UAP. I want to underscore today that only a very small percentage of UAP reports display signatures that could reasonably be described as anomalous. The majority of unidentified objects reported to Aero demonstrate mundane characteristics of balloons, unmanned aerial systems, clutter, natural phenomena, or other readily explainable sources. I should also state clearly for the record that in our research, Arrow has found no credible evidence thus far of extraterrestrial activity, off-world technology, or objects that defy the known laws of physics. In the event sufficient scientific data were ever obtained, that a UAP encountered can only be explained by extraterrestrial origin. We are committed to working with our interagency partners at NASA to appropriately inform U.S. government's leadership of its findings for those few cases that have leaked to the public previously and subsequently commented on by the U.S. government. I encourage those who hold alternative theories or views to submit your research to credible peer-reviewed scientific journals. Arrow is working very hard to do the same. That is how science works, not by blog or social media. We know that there is tremendous public interest in UAP and a desire for answers from Arrow. By its very nature, the UAP challenge has for decades lent itself to mystery, sensationalism, and even conspiracy. For that reason, Arrow remains committed to transparency, accountability, and to sharing as much with the American public as we can, consistent with our obligation to protect not only intelligence sources and methods, but U.S. and allied capabilities. This chart represents the trend analysis of all the cases in Arrow's holdings right to date. What you'll see on the left is a histogram of all of our reported sightings as a function of altitude. So most of our sightings occur in the 15 to 25,000 foot range. And that is ultimately because that's where a lot of our aircraft are. On the far right upper corner, you'll see a breakout of the morphologies of all of the UAP that are reported. Over half, about 52% of what's been reported to us are round orb spheres. The rest of those break out into all kinds of different other shapes. The gray box is uh, essentially there is no data on what its shape is. Either it wasn't reported or the uh, sensor did not collect it. The bottom uh, map is a heat map of all reporting areas across the globe that we have available to us. What you'll notice is that there is a heavy, what we call collection bias, both in altitude and in geographic location. That's where all of our sensors exist. That's where our training ranges are. That's where our operational ranges are. That's where all of our platforms are. In the middle, what we have done is reduce the most typically reported UAP characteristics to these uh, fields, mostly round, mostly one to four meters, white, silver, translucent, metallic, 10,000 to 30,000 feet, with apparent velocities from stationary to Mach 2. No thermal exhausts usually detected. We get intermittent radar returns. We get intermittent radio returns. And we get intermittent thermal signatures. That's what we're looking for and trying to understand what that is. Um, This first one is an MQ-9 in the Middle East observing that blow up, which is an apparent spherical object via EO sensors. Those are not IR. 
You'll see it uh, come through the top of the screen. There it goes. And then the camera will slew to follow it. You'll see it pop in and out of the field of view there. This is essentially all of the data we have associated with this event from some years ago. It is going to be virtually impossible to fully identify that just based off of that video. Now, what we can do and what we are doing is keeping that as part of that group of 52% to see what are the similarities, what are the trends across all of these, do we see these in a particular distribution, do they all behave the same or not. As we get more data, we will be able to go back and look at these in a fuller context. Now, I think it is um, prudent to say of the, of the cases that are showing you know, some sort of advanced technical signature of which we're talking single percentages of the entire population of cases we have, um, I am concerned about what that nexus is. And I have indicators that some are related to foreign capabilities. We have to investigate that with our IC partners. And as we get evidence to support that, that gets then handed off to the appropriate IC agency to investigate. Again, it becomes an SEP at that point. Yeah, somebody else's problem. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there are emerging capabilities out there that, that in many instances, Russia and China, well, China in particular, are on par or ahead of us in some areas. The, the, the adversary is not waiting. They are advancing and they're advancing quickly. If I were to put on some of my old hats, I would tell you they are less risk averse at technical advancement than we are. Right? They are just willing to try things and see if it works. Are there capabilities that could be employed against us in both an ISR and a weapons fashion? Absolutely. Do I have evidence that they're doing it in these cases? No, but I have concerning indicators. Uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick, Congress has mandated that your office establish a discoverable and accessible electronic method for potential witnesses of UAP incidents and potential participants in government UAP related activities to contact your office and tell their stories. Congress also set up a process whereby people uh, subject to non-disclosure agreements, preventing them from disclosing what they may have witnessed or participated in, could tell you what they know without risk of retribution from the, or violation of their NDAs. Um, so as Arrow is developing and implementing its science plan, it has to do so grounded in a solid foundation of scientific theory across the entire range of hypotheses that have been presented for what UAP are. That range spans adversary breakthrough technology on one hand, known objects and phenomena in the middle, all the way to the extreme theories of extraterrestrials. All of that has physics-based signatures associated with it, whether it's theoretical from the academic community, known from things like hypersonic weapons, or uh, adversary breakthrough technologies, as we've talked about before, or the known objects that we have to go measure. The idea is across that entire range, you have to come up with peer-reviewed scientific basis for all of it. Used. In addition, things like open source and um, um, crowdsourcing of, of data. We're exploring public-private partnerships, ma'am, as you know, we've talked about in the past to look at, is there a way to smartly crowdsource additional data that might be useful to augment some of my classified sources? And what does that look like? And how would we do it so that we're not overwhelmed by, you know, everybody who wants to take a picture of everything? 